Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Hold Mess Tom and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Oh my god. If you are new here, my channel is all about loving my collection as it currently is, being critical of new makeup releases, and also being thoughtful about what we bring into our makeup collection. And I say that as someone who has spent too much money on makeup and has a collection that's out of control and I'm trying to get it under control. That's like the basis of my channel. So if that sounds good to you, I would love to have you subscribe. And don't forget to like this video. I would appreciate it if you did that. And I'm also on Patreon if you would like to support me further there. This is another episode of Critical Sass. Critical Sass are my new makeup release videos. We talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the sad. That's what we're doing here today. Let's get into it. I use a number of Instagram sources. So I use Trend Mood 1, Makeup Release Radar, Beauty News Official, and occasionally I will use Chic Profile Official because she will post some more luxury things that we don't really see on other, other Instagram handles. So those are all the resources that I tend to use, and I typically do use photos from them. So I appreciate all the hard work that those Instagram profiles do. So I will link those Instagram handles in the links down below, as well as if you wanted to support any of the causes that I currently am supporting and oppose things, that you, check it out in the links down below. I also have a podcast where I talk about music with my friend Tiffany. All down below. All down below. So wherever you want, whatever you want to find is in the links below as well as what I'm wearing on my face. All of those good things. We love to see it. Although I think a lot of what I'm wearing today is discontinued. Let me just open up Trend Mood. Let's, let's roll. So I will just be going from what's newest back to what I hit in my last critical sass. The critical sasses have been shorter recently, which is okay by me. There's also some brands that I just refuse to talk about on my channel. So if you don't hear me talking about them and they have new releases, very likely not a brand that I'm interested in talking about on my channel. So the first thing that that sparks interest is, I guess, Walmart and Space NK. And they're going to bring prestige beauty products to more than or about 250 Walmart stores nationwide. A thoughtfully curated collection of prestige products specifically for the Walmart customer. Brands like Slip by Terry, Philip B, Lancer, Mario Badescu, Ferreo. So the thing I guess that sticks out here the most would be by Terry in a Walmart. Seems like bizarre. Like some of the other brands, like Mario Badescu, I feel like that's like... I don't I don't I guess I didn't realize that Mario Badescu wasn't already sold at Walmart because it's it is rather inexpensive. So this is interesting. I don't know what this means. I don't it it's it feels late for Walmart to be getting into like the beauty game otherwise. Because I always thought like Target's beauty section was pretty good and they had like a nice rotating list of things. And they also had like colored rain for a bit if they don't still have it and also Ulta's are now going like there's going to be like Ulta and Target which is you know I think really smart although I don't know if that started happening I think it has if you have an Ulta and Target let me know because it hasn't happened at the Target that I typically shop at but doesn't mean it's not happening at Target's it just might not be happening at that Target because there is a there's an Ulta not far from like in the same complex so that would make sense maybe why they wouldn't put an Ulta in Target there. But also, why not? So I don't know. I don't know what the greater ramifications of this are. I just can't see. Uh, I don't know. I just can't see someone who normally shops at Walmart buying by Terry. Unless they are someone who already shops and like likes luxury makeup, but also shops at Walmart. And obviously... That's not judgment to anyone who shops at Walmart. I personally don't shop at Walmart, but it's also something that I actually don't have easy access to where I live. Much easier for me to get to a Target. Much easier for me to get to... Not that there aren't Walmart. Available now, there's the new Summer 2022 collection by NARS. <sighs> Summer Unrated Blush Bronzer Duo, Orgasm X, and Casino. Oh, so there's three different... Well, I don't know. I guess that's not bad. Um, there's three different cheek options. There are duos, which I actually, that's not a bad idea. 
I don't think so. Here's the thing. I read NARS quite a bit. Also, this looks like a nose. I was like, does this look really big for a NARS palette? I read NARS quite a bit for being a bit boring. And they are. <laughs> but I know that there's a market for it. But it just is like, if we're not really going to change the shades that we include in our palettes, why not innovate like textures that are going to be available in Sephora or something like that? I just like, I don't, I don't see why. I don't just, I don't know. I don't know why I should buy a NARS palette over all the other things that I could buy. Right? Like, I just don't see it. And I don't really care for their blushes. The only one I really like, I think it's called Sinful or Sin. It's like a purple blush. It's really pretty. And it works on the many, many skin tones because of just like, it's like a different color. So it's not like you can compare it to much else. So anyway, that's my thoughts on. And also, I do think that NARS makes some pretty foundations. And I think they do an okay job with their shade range. So like that's what NARS does for me but this palette is pretty but it's also just like again why should I buy that I could easily I easily have things in my collection that are like just as beautiful as that and I think that that's the other thing is like a lot of people do but it does seem to me that people who really love neutrals cannot get enough of neutrals like they want neutrals from everywhere so I get it but also I don't like I just uh, it's not that I'm bored with makeup, right? Because I really like the collection I have. And I just bought the Gila palette from Odin's Eye. And I've been having a lot of fun just fussing around with that. It's like a beautiful palette. However, it's not like I'm looking for trendy things either. Because I think that sometimes we get really messy with trendy stuff where it's like people try to push out a product too fast in order to like hit the trend. And it's just not the move, right? Like I want to see... I just think that brands have stopped thinking out into the future and are just either have are not going to try much anymore. Like I feel like NARS is like they're not reinventing the wheel. Right. And also they're just like repackaging things that are already in their collection as far as cheeks go. So my my thing is, is just like, why aren't brands that are sold in like Sephora or Ulta where why aren't they thinking down the line and going like, well, this isn't popular now, but. When a year from now, when we release this, what's going to set us apart? And I don't just I just don't think anyone's uh, vying for individuality anymore as far as brands that are carried in in stores like or that have counters. Like, I just don't think that any brands that are I just don't think they're doing that. I just, just don't think they are. So a little bit disappointing, in my opinion, from from NARS. Next thing, I never heard of this brand, but I think it's it's always fun to talk about different brands because why not? This is a brand called Sugary Cosmetics and they are releasing the Sugar Rush collection. They have a concealer palette and translucent powder. The concealer palette's $22 and then the powder is $12. So that's like pretty inexpensive. That's pretty affordable. In my humble opinion, you know, I think everyone has a different opinion of what affordable looks like to them. So I'm not trying to discount that. However, when I look at this palette, this concealer palette, it doesn't get too deep. And here's the other thing. Uh, a concealer palette like this is for makeup artistry that someone is doing on other people. Or if you are like someone who really wants to play around with like contouring and shape shifting in ways that like many people do not, right? If you are going to take it there. So I guess, I mean, that's like a continuation of makeup artistry as well. So I'm not like trying to discount that either. But who, like, who is this for? Like, that's the thing. When I, so sometimes I'll ask the question, who is this for? Or I will try to solve that. But the thing is, I don't know who their target demo is because I don't know that a makeup artist is going to like try this brand unless you're someone who's like who wants to be a makeup artist and you don't have like access to be able to afford something that would be more expensive than this. So like maybe this would be a good like trial run to like something to try to put in your kit. But to me, this is just like this isn't it. Also, I just think with also the color correctors in here, I don't think that they are. I don't think that those are going to be suitable for all skin tones either. Also, all depths of because 
sometimes you really have to play with like the kind of green that you're putting on top of red things. You're going to have to play with other different types of things to, to you know, counteract. And I just don't know that this is going to have the the variety that one might need. I, I, but I don't like, so I think if you are a makeup artist who's just starting out and this is all you can afford and you wanted to try something and to have something in your kit, I think this is like maybe a good idea. Can't speak to the quality of it though. So like, that's like who I see this is for. I just like, don't see like someone who's like a, a serious makeup artist being like, this is their go-to concealer set. Do you know what I mean? And then the translucent powder, I think it's a little disappointing for us to just assume that one translucent powder is enough, especially whenever your concealer palette has like a little bit better of a range. But I always worry, especially like if you are someone who has deeper skin tones, like the translucent powder is going to show up on you. So I just think like having a truly colorless powder is pretty difficult. There's a new brightening CC powder from By Terry, Speak of the Devil, and You Shall Receive. This is a, an illuminating powder that captures the light and boosts your natural radiance with no coverage. The optical glow technology provides color corrections, smooths lines, and blurs imperfections with rosehip oil to even out the skin tone without drying the skin. Create a flawless, buildable, silky smooth texture for $48. What? What is this? Is this a highlighter? There's a lot of, there's a lot of claims there. There's a lot of claim. Is this an all, is this a, a finishing powder? What is this? That wasn't very descriptive. There appears to be only one shade of this. So whenever I see CC, it's like color correcting, but a shiny color corrector. I mean, it's limited edition. So I guess if you want it, you got to go and get it now. But I, I would say, I don't know about this. So, so something that I could see this before, like if you have like a skin tone close to this shade, I think this could probably be a very beautiful, subtle highlighter that might even out and blur things that appear on your like cheeks where you would put it. But like, I'm confused about what this is mostly. Like, what is it? What is it? What is it? I know it says brightening CC powder, but like, there's only one shape. So like, I need, I need, I need more. Like I need, I need, what is this? It's a hell no, da no, 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 hell no. I guess this is a good as place for, as ever to talk about the closing of Makeup Geek Cosmetics. Now, I have never purchased from Makeup Geek, so I could be speaking out of line here, but here is the vibe that I get from Makeup Geek. Here's the vibe that I got from Makeup Geek. It was one of those brands that came into a lot of prevalence as influencers came into prevalence. And so hand in hand, they like came up together. Then what happened is Makeup Geek was not able to keep up with not only trends, but also did not have the funds to innovate new formulas that were going to be really exciting to people. So it was like always a game of catch up. And I think that's what really happened. And of course, you know, the pandemic and then on top of just like money just being like, it just feels like money is scarce right now. That's how it feels to me. Like everyone is needs money. <laughs> like uh, money is scarce. There are a lot of things going on in the world, right? That take prevalence, right? And like, I, I so I, I guess I don't want to say that I'm not surprised, but like, I guess I'm not, right? It is, it's sad to see something that was, I don't think that I could be speaking out of line here. I don't think that Makeup Geek ever got bought out by a larger company. So I think that it's pretty sad that a truly independent company is shutting down. The same thing with Midas Cosmetics that is either shut down completely or in the process like of selling out its like last stock. I did hear from somewhere. I wasn't really, I'm not, I haven't been researching. I'm not going to follow like the business aspect of a bunch of things because the I do kind of like to speculate about what's going on with Sephora, with especially with all of the brands now selling at Ulta too. Like a lot of brands are like selling at both retailers more than before. And I think that there's greater consequences there for Sephora than Sephora might think, or maybe Sephora is like a hellfire only talking about this in their business meetings. But I do think that that, I like to think about that aspect of business things, but I don't really like to think about brands closing. 
So I don't want to be too harsh on Makeup Geek, but I will say this, that Makeup Geek never made anything that inspired me to purchase from them ever. Like not one time did I ever think I would like to buy something from Makeup Geek. And I know that Marlena has had her highs and lows as uh, an influencer and a brand owner, which is to be expected. So I think that there was a, a lot of variables here that one could try to draw conclusions to you, but I think overall it's sad, but also it also, I think it just shows you how much like money speaks specifically in this industry. And I think a lot of brands who have failed to innovate, like I've heard good things about makeup geek formulas, but I think anyone who's failing to innovate is is really going to get lost in the sauce here and much quicker than and like much much quicker like so much faster than they ever had like it's and i think that's what's ha- like we have a lot of new brands coming in as well as it seems like some brands <laughs> now exiting the scene but i do wonder the longevity of the new brands that are coming onto the scene right because they did not come up with the influencer culture it'll be interesting to see how they navigate this versus like a brand like makeup geek who who has called it quits. I'll just leave that there. Okay, let's move along. I now I just thought of something that I defo want to talk about. Mm, oh, okay. So Natasha Denona is going to be releasing a pastel eyeshadow palette. I don't know that that is what it's going to be called, but there was like, oh, it, it does say pastel palette. Makes sense for spring. It does. I am not a pastel makeup wearer. That is just not. I. It is either like green smoky eye, which is like my prefer. Like that is what I want to do all the time. Or if I pull out a vibrant, I want it to be vibrant. I don't really dwell in the realm of pastel. So, and also Natasha Denona is very much hit or miss for me. Not so much formula wise, but color story wise it 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 drastically varies from release to release whether or not i'm interested in it and i can tell you this i am 0% interested in this i also worry that i worry about deeper complexions and how well that this will work for them and i know that there are like definitely pastels that people with deeper complexions can wear but just seeing this swatched on the lights, like a someone with light skin's arm, I don't have hope for this performing well on someone with a deeper complexion. So I'm not interested. I'm just going to move right along from it. But I do want to talk about this. Mother, 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 mother has released the Dark Star 006 version 3, which has a new shade in it. The Sextra Galactic shade, which is a multi-chrome. The Mayron Mixing Liquid. Interesting. Now that Mother has her own mixing medium, I find it very peculiar that you would put the Mayron Mixing Medium into this kit when you could put a mini of your own mixing medium. It also comes with the Extreme Black Eyeliner and the Eye Gloss, which is okay. So here's the thing. If I was a working makeup artist who did photography shoots, I don't, I, having an eye gloss wouldn't be like the worst idea, right? Because it might look really pretty in shots, but there's no longevity to an eye gloss. It is simply for photos. And if you are someone who likes to do your makeup solely for Instagram, you probably can get away with having some fun with an eye gloss, which is so cool, like, which is fine. But I will say for me, yes, as a makeup enjoyer, someone who likes to put makeup on and like wear it out and have some longevity with my makeup and eyeglass is a complete nightmare. So one of the four things is already out. Second thing, black eyeliner. I think most of us have black eyeliner in spades. And a lot of us, if we have been wearing makeup for a long time, have a preferred black eyeliner. I like Pat McGrath's eyeliner. However, I can see how that, I can see points against it for that, right? So two, two things that like maybe we would need. Three, the Mayron mixing medium that comes in that very small, that small container, which is like helpful if you don't have Mayron mixing medium. And it's a good way to try it if you never have. And then it also comes with the pigment. Here's the thing. Here's what I don't understand about Pat McGrath right now is the shades that everyone wants in the Mothership palettes are the pigments. This is one of those pigments, just so you know. 
this kit costs $50. So if you then break it down price per item, each item is $12.50, which is not bad price per item for what they are. However, I don't understand why Pat McGrath hasn't figured out how to package and sell the pigments either from the Mothership palettes or new shades that aren't available in the Mothership palettes because people would buy those or people would buy one of those to give them a try as opposed to spending $125 on one of the Mothership palettes, which I can respect and understand. So is this a good way to try one of the special pigments from a Mothership palette? I would say no. I would say no, unless you want to try all four of these products. No, absolutely not. I'm going to tell you to go buy a multi-chrome from an indie brand because this multi-chrome is not special. Is the formula different than other multi-chromes? Yeah, definitely. It's it. Pat McGrath's formula in those special shades, it, they, they are special. They're, they're, they're interesting. They're weird. They're not like anything else you've really felt, right? I'm going to go ahead and like, I'm going to say that. They're also like, they're a little bit drier than you think they're going to be. I, I've heard someone call them scratchy. I don't think that they're scratchy. They're just like drier than you expect them to be, especially when you see them, when, when you see people using them, like the, the way they, the payoff is really great, but they don't feel like they look on whenever you see them on video or in photos. So I just, I don't understand what the disconnect is because I, you, we have to understand that mother, that she knows that Pat McGrath knows that that's like what a lot of people are interested in her as far as eyeshadows. I personally like Pat McGrath mattes and I also like Pat McGrath shimmers that appear in the motherships that are not these special shades. But I, I understand completely that there are a lot of people who don't want to buy the $125 eyeshadow palette for one reason or another. So I just don't know why we, so we did try selling singles, but that seemed to be a little bit of a bust. They like almost went on sale, rel they went on sale relatively quickly, right? Because it was $25 for an eyeshadow. They weren't really big pans. And beyond that, the packaging of them was like flimsy and and cheap where there are other high-end brands that do single eyeshadows that still feel luxe whenever you're holding them and that's like a continuous problem with Pat McGrath's packaging is some of it feels very luxe and other times it feels like garbage and I'm going to tell you that this little plastic thing that this pigment comes in is not going to feel luxurious to you so you have to consider that too if you are looking to buy this for a luxe experience. Anything that comes in these kits with the sequins is not a luxe experience. The that packaging is cool, although it's very wasteful and like you know, you can feel about sequins and plastic glitter however you want, but like I do kind of take that into consideration. It's like it doesn't need to be packaged with sequins. Now, it used to be a big draw for me. I used to really like that. I because it does make it different. It does make it feel a little bit special, but then you just have sequins you have to dispose of. Anyway, I do have like big problems with this. So why don't we, Mother, if we're going to sell single shades and we want to sell these pigments as singles and mark up the price of them, which is what you would do because you're a luxe brand, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find single packaging that feels worth the price too and that you can mark up as well. Because here's what's happening. If you were to sell me a pigment in a plastic container like that, I'm not going to buy it. Like, the, uh, wh why not buy a pro pan of another multi-chrome or another special pigment from another brand? Because I'd rather do that and be able to use it in my palettes. Because here's the thing. Those don't have pans. They're baked. Into, they're baked. They're baked into, like, they have that, like, grid on the bottom. So you can even, like, depot these to put in a pro pan. So there's, there's, I just, you, there's a... Ugh. There's a lot to think about here. So like while we are on to something by releasing more multi-chromes and special shades, I don't think this is the route to do it because I don't think we're interested. Now, if you sold it as a duo for half the price, the Mayron Mixing Medium with the pigment, I think that's a good thing. I think people would buy that for $25 to $30. And I don't think that that's actually a bad price because I do think that multi-chromes, I understand that they are more expensive to formulate and create. So I think that that would be a completely justified thing. And then also people who have never tried Mayron on mixing medium would get to try that as well as the pigment. But again, I still think it's weird that you're not putting your own mixing medium in the product. It does make me feel a little bit iffy about that. Ugh, in my last critical sass, we talked about the Gwen Stefani brand. And you know what it is? It's like the nightmare that I thought it was going to be. It's a red lip, it's red lips and neutral eyes. And the packaging is cute, but I don't care. I don't 
care. I don't even want to tell you about all the things in here. Like, I'm so bored. This, when, what did you think this added? What value do you think this added to the makeup industry? Other than you making money. Here's the thing, babes. I don't think makeup lovers are going to buy this. Because I think a lot of people are going to ask what value. I think a lot of people are fed up with makeup brands. Now, if Gwen Stefani would have really latched on to no doubt era early solo career Gwen Stefani and had like a light blue lipstick and like a bunch of fun things, it'd be a different story. But this, this looks like trash mama. Danessa Myricks is releasing some more complexion stuff. So it's the Yummy Skin Collection. There's the Yummy Skin Glow Serum which is 34 dull hairs, and then the Yummy Skin Serum Foundation, which is 34 dull hairs as well. The Glow Serum can be used as a highlighter or a primer. It comes in two shades, and the foundation comes in 26 shades with four different undertones. And I guess it has refillable packaging. So, uh, huh. So I really want to be interested in this. I do think that this is a, an interesting release. I think that Danessa Myricks is really good at skin. She really is. However, I do think that the kind of makeup she does on her models is very specific to photography and not wearable. So like not wearable out. It's like she does very shiny makeup, which I think is it's like clean, but it's very shiny. And I think that sometimes it reads like just too shiny. Now, I understand like I, my skin is naturally shiny. It's like how lucky of me. So maybe that's my aversion to it. And I like radiance, but hers always looks wet. Her, the skin that she does looks wet. And I know that there are a lot of people who like that look for the everyday, but it isn't me. And so I think that this is a, maybe a little bit too, this is too specific for me and what I like. Cause I have seen on Danessa's Instagram post, cause I do follow her. I think she's really talented. I do see her like using these on people. And I think, wow, that's really pretty with this lighting what's it going to look like when I go outside in not sunshine and it's like an overcast day and maybe it's raining, you know, like without the beautiful lighting, I just don't know this is going to have the same effect. And I need something that's going to be a little bit more adapt, more adaptable to the situations. I'm running out of steam just a little bit. I think I have talked to the talk and walked the walk as far as new makeup releases go right now. I appreciate you all so much for watching. If you are new here and you enjoyed today's video, I'd love to have you stick around and subscribe. So you can go ahead and do that now. And if you want to see any other videos from me, well, I have quite the back catalog. So you can go ahead and check that out. And don't forget to like this video on your way out. Again, I'm on Patreon if you'd like to support me there, but no pressure to. And remember to follow your hoat and you'll find me. I'll see you in my next video. Bye, friends. Bye.